Okay, well, first of all, I'm giving you pocket protectors because I'm retiring. <laughs> Why are you doing that? And my little, my, I've sold my little business. Oh, I didn't uh, know. It'll be in Connecticut, and I can't say who, a friend of mine. And uh, I've run a calibration lab for 30 years based on work I did at Macklet. It's a product I designed in 1977, and they're still using it. And there is a company still building it, more or less. I don't know how many. And, but uh, we sold, you know, we keep selling a, a bunch of used ones, though it's, you know, there's only so long you can beat a dead horse. And, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's an important product used for calibrating x-ray machines, mostly by the manufacturers. It used to be used by the Army and Air Force for field service, but it was heavy equipment, and they used it until around, when? Mid 80s, right? And then that petered out. So, but developed mm -hmm. other products and that filled in the gap. And so, you know, we've been muddling along for 30 years in my basement and <laughs> it, we deal with them, pretty big companies. And, you know, we're an accredited calibration lab. So uh, I'll keep it running in Connecticut with another person I've worked with for many years. So I've built. Uh, because uh, Terry's uh, gun pop pooped out during uh, the end of field day, and he, I think he went and sent it out for repair. And uh, here's the status on the two. What we did was, is I did manage to fix the one that we got from Frank, who just generously donated his to clean out some space in this garage. So for anyone looking to install in the short term, I've got that one fixed. Yeah. And you know what I did? That was just shoe goop in the hole. Remember the hole? Shoe goop. And yeah. it's pretty much sealed. Uh, maybe loses a half a pound every five minutes if you don't fire immediately. The one that we do that's broken solid though, the AT if you have still needs to be shipped out and I will the next one too. Okay, so uh, I've built, I, 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 I had to build the unit several years ago, maybe five, six years ago, and it was pretty fragile. PVC pipe does not take very much to break. And so I think the first one you know, the, the steel piping for the fill valve snapped off from, from the body and, you know, that kind of wrecked the first one. So then, you know, I built the second one. Now, this initial one, I used a ball valve to release the air pressure. And that's not very fast. So uh, it didn't work all that well, though I did get antennas mostly halfway up my trees. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so uh, I used some of those parts. And next slide. Back one. Okay, there's a website called aircannonplans.com. And uh, a very good website is, they, I mean, they're into spud guns and, and you know, ping pong ball launchers and potato and, you know, and dangerous ones too, you know, using, uh, not just air, but you know, they talk about, you know, the more dangerous kinds of spud guns you can build. But the basic configuration is an air reservoir and a, a fast release valve. And, and they recommend using a particular uh, valve that's used for sprinklers and modifying it. And, so, and, and just to add, yeah, because they're the ones that will discharge from fully pressurized to nothing in a quarter of a second. Well, well faster than that. that. Okay, next. Yes. So, uh, they, on their website, they listed, you know, all the PVC pipes and what it's used for. I'm using, I have a barrel that's a two and a half inch uh, Schedule 40 PVC, and I'm launching a little rubber, a little rubber ball that weighs about two ounces. This also tells me you could launch a beer Tennis ball would need a, a three inch barrel. Next. All right, so how high will it go? So I did some, this is all what you would call back of envelope calculations, because truly I fished into the waste basket and I got an envelope out to make my calculations on. Okay, so the energy stored in a gas, oh, is pressure times volume. And uh, the energy of kinetic motion is mass times gravity times height, is how high will it go? So that's the 
energy once the ball is not moving at the top of the tree. So I'm using 80 pounds pressure. The ID of this two and a half inch pipe was 2.34. The tubing length was 68 inches. So I calculated the volume. I have 292 cubic inches or 0.169 cubic feet and it's stored in energy at 80 pounds pressure, 13 and a half foot pounds of energy. Then take a fill factor, <clears throat> the diameter of the ball which is slightly less than the diameter of the pipe, so that's about 90%. So the maximum theoretical height is 149 feet. Next. Well, I, I did get, okay, so here's the, here's the beast. Here we have the, fill, the uh, sprinkler valve. I had a, a very nice Hoke uh, valve that has a little toggle handle on it. I mean, I've had this in my collection of spare parts probably for 50 years or so. I mean, it looks old and crusty, but it works just well. I used an oil-filled pressure gauge because when I use a cheap pressure gauge and you put, and you have a compressor with no reservoir, you're going to get fast pulsing of your needle and that's going to just destroy the pressure gauge in no time. So I have a, a tire fill valve, a shut off ball valve going into a uh, piece of one, this is a one inch T. So, and not, not a plastic T because you've got, pr you know, the, th the whole thing is you got a lot of weight in here and, and this plastic is going to break if you put a lot of stress on it. So in building this thing, I decided I had to have minimal stress. In fact, just as I would, this is left over from my last attempt, and I tried, and I, this is where it broke. Because right. okay. originally I had the fill valves at the corner, and, and that, again, was putting the pipe right into a vulnerable spot. So that's where it snapped off. I tried filling it with RTV and stuff. It, it just kept leaking. So I did another version. Next. Okay, so I have a nice spinning reel here that I got at Sportsman's Den in Koskov, and it's filled with, they filled it up with shark line. He said, this is, and they shows me, they had a, uh, a big shark pole there. He said, this is just what they used in the movie Jaws. So, I mean, really, you can't, you can't, it's really, you can't tear this line, at least not by hand. Uh, next, in fact, you can barely cut it. Okay, so here's the sprinkler valve. There's a solenoid that's usually screwed into this place, and the instructions were to remove it and modify it, fill in, fill in the hole where the, where the uh, solenoid valve was and drill and tap a hole in the center of the valve. And fortunately, I had all these little taps. So it, I think it was an eight quarter inch NPT tap. So next, I'll show you the in somewhere I have the insides of this valve. Yeah, here's the inside. So you take the valve apart. There were four. I bought this on Amazon. It's an orbit sprinkler valve. It was like twenty dollars or something like that. You take it apart. You have a a uh, a rubber uh, actuator, a spring, and it, there's not much in there. The way it works is that there's a pilot. If you let a little air in behind it, 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 it uh, relieves the pressure in such a way that the valve opens. So uh, I had to fill in this with, with epoxy, and I filled in on the other side just to make sure, you know. And that wasn't, even that I had to try a couple of times to get it really not to leak. So, I mean, this is not like a one-day project. This, this kind of lingered. Next. And there's a close-up view of the work. There's the a relief. This this would either be they said use a uh, an, an air gun valve. Well, I had two air guns and they both leaked. <laughs> so I had the Hoke valve. I knew that was a good vacuum. That was a vacuum-type valve, pretty expensive, I guess, when it was new. 
So uh, I used the Hoke valve instead of the air gun release and filled that, that in with uh, just that blue uh, silicone. I don't know what it's happening. A what? It's threading. Thread. I had to thread the uh, piece of pipe into the body of the valve. <clears throat> Next. Okay, so this is the this is the body of this is the the body of the valve. You see, it's uh, I've got a piece of one inch uh, brass um, pipe nipple there. I got those on Amazon too. Cause I I went to the Home Depot in Stanford and I was trying to I had to, I had to go from just just go from the two and a half inch to the to the one inch pipe, and it was like. You know, you're going through all these bit combinations, and yet I couldn't do it, but it took me like one minute on Amazon to buy the parts. So they probably cost twice as much as the junk at Home Depot, but it works. Okay, so uh, next. <clears throat> all right, so this is just the close-up of the fill valve. This is the from the compressor, the ball valve, pressure gauge. Next, close up of the spinning reel. Next, can I just make a comment? Yeah, that brass pipe on both sides is a great idea because that's where our guns always break. That's the mechanical weak point. Never thought of doing that. Are all the gray areas a uh, metal pipe? Oh, no, this is. I had a can of uh, Krylon. This was oh, okay. white, white uh, PVC, and I. Hit it with hammer tone uh, Krylon, so it, <laughs> it looks cooler. Looks cool. and, also, and also, that's this. You can you put it in an iron sight if you want. I, you, I had some uh, flat line insulators, and I tapped a, a hole in both ends. And if you really wanted, you could. Though I was successful without it, but how no, much I line just, do, you, do you have on the reel? I think it like. He said, well, I, I don't know, 500, 1,000 feet, I don't know. He just filled it up and it was up. Yeah, the standard denominations on the Shark Line, 250, 500, 1,000, give or take, because it's yeah. in yards. You follow me? And I'm betting that they gave you 500 feet. Yeah. As a yeah. Because I typically put like 450 to 500 on ours. With your yeah, it was completely full the, 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 uh, when I started. I'm down one. There's, there's some little... Uh, gradations on the inside of the reel. Mm -hmm. I've already, I think I've already lost like one gradation full of line and that scrap. So this is out of my basement. Next, so but this has this old, so originally this thing kind of looked like a tuba with a, a, re, a, a double air, air chamber that was kind of hokey. So I redid this thing uh, next. Okay, I put a uh, an eye an eye eyelet there so the, to guide the uh, fishing line. Otherwise, it was like all over the place. So this way, it easily goes into the tube. When I take the ball out, it's not it's not sloppy, and it fires well. Okay, next. Okay, that's the iron sight, that's flat line. <laughs> that's insulator in my junk box. All right, so here's that a revised version. It's I had a six there's about six five foot eight of of two oh this is two inch PVC pipe. I had this old, old ball valve that just was there from the previous unit, so I just left it. I had to redo the the U at the at the bottom because that was leaking. Uh, we go, then go to a reducing bushing from this is two inch, two inch, then a reducing bushing, two inch to one inch threaded pipe, a one inch uh, T, one inch nipple again, uh, going into the uh, sprinkler valve. valve, another one inch nipple. Now I had to step up. From two inch to the two and a half inch, we've got the cable clamps holding on the uh, 
fishing reel and a piece of wood to keep these two pieces from separating and eventually I did put a, uh, a very large aircraft clamp holding those two pieces together so we don't have a lot of flex. Next. Okay, so the trigger assembly is a sprinkler valve, uh, pressure gauge, oil filled pressure gauge, tire fill valve, oil valve, to isolate the fill valve. But in case this was leaking, I, I, I could shut off the uh, fill, oh, the, the, uh, the airline. Also, if I wanted to, as a, as a cheat, to, to uh, stop filling it, I'd just throw it throw the compressor into uh, overload and it'll, you know, just the safety relief valve on the compressor will start blowing and then I can go and pull, you know, disconnect it from the wall. <clears throat> Next. Okay, so here's uh, okay, we have a two and a half inch nominal barrel. It's 2.34 inches ID. Just a close up. I made a little, a couple of pieces of uh, aluminum angle to and clamped it around the joint where the two uh, elbows meet to try to re re reduce the uh, any stress on that point because that's a weak point. Next. All right, so here's me outside the back of the house, and we, we have a, a air compressor, and I'm filling it up. Next. Some of these are, an, are animated. I don't know which ones are, but, but we, we have one really good animation here. Okay, so now I'm filling it up. Oh, there. Okay, it moved. I moved. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Roz took some of the, the pictures here. And okay, so we're plugged into the wall. We're up to uh, 80 PSI pressure. We're getting ready to launch. Next. There. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's not the way you pull a no, plug out. the way you can disconnect that electric car. <laughs> Done by an engineer. <laughs> Next. I have a quick question yeah. as you're going through this. Tell me a little bit about the fit of the ball to your barrel. Well, it was, a, it was a, like I said, 90%, uh, it was about, you know, what was that, about 10 thousandths, 10, 20 thousand slop on, either, on, on the ball. This is what I have found with ours, you know, the standard design that we use. If you, they sent you a can of balls that were brand new tennis balls when they were made, and they put the loop in them, then you have to use the rammer to get them down. Oh, no, I have, no, I I have, another, mine, tr I have another trick that I will tell you. Okay, but well, once I've used mine for three or four cycles, though, each ball, and it's gotten wet or been dragged through the mud, so the fresh fuzz is gone, then you don't even use the plunger, you just whoop, and it yeah. goes down to the bottom of the barrel by its own right. Yeah, well, anyway. these just fall right in. Same thing. Well, I use a one Okay, well, what I did... One show with mine. And I had to build it up with some black tape to because it was too small yeah. to get more compression. Well, when I got more compression, I we added like you know two cups of water. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, now, like we we used the uh, we we took a photo of the launch using the iPhone on the high speed mode. We uh, it appears you have a uh, twenty. 0.025 seconds, 25 milliseconds between frames. In one frame, it moved about six feet. Right. So we're we'll going 240 feet a second. 163 miles an hour. Okay. So here's the thing: <laughs> the design. I don't know what their criteria Next. is, but they say on theirs their exit is 145. Okay. So perspective. So okay. I don't know if you ever heard of this. So. The John, no, not John McEnroe, I'm trying to remember. I think it was Rod Laver in our day, yeah. back in the 70s, was V-Serve. 
he might have been in the 120 range. Yeah. Today's uh, serve, professional tennis servers, males, about 140. Oh, yeah, the speed off the bat, they're Think telling you it's 110, 120 miles an hour off the bat. Yep. So, so a home run. run. <laughs> so we're, this is a home run here. This whole thing is a real home run. <clears throat> And it's up the water. That's a step recursion. Next. Now, the cup of water to what? Down barrel. into the barrel. Now, here I go. Okay, I think this should have. This one might be animated. Like, so, yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love show it, it again. Boom. And look, he's got smoke. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they, they do smoke. I will tell you. Yeah. But what you're usually seeing is just debris and shock coming out of the mechanism. In that Okay. <laughs> right. okay. Now watch carefully. If you, you if you can you, step through it. Yep. 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 Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 I, I mean, I'm just blown away how good the, the phone is. Yeah. Here. I mean, it's too. that's just. Now, I see you had that resting on the ground, but when you have, have it on your shoulder, you get much. No, of I don't rust it on my. It's heavy. Yeah, but the, you know, it's heavy enough so you don't get much of a kickback. I have no kickback, it's on the ground. Oh. <laughs> All you gotta do is just aim. Yeah, I think, did I pick it up to use it, Russ? Or did I just fire no, from I the ground? I think mostly I just... So you lay down on the ground to fight. <laughs> nah, I just... Okay, so uh, next. Um, there's the ball. Went up, <laughs> went up and over this uh, um, Japanese maple. And it took a little while to come down. You know, a lot of... Maybe it took me 10 minutes to get the ball on this particular tree. Others, it went, you know, but this was a pretty dense tree. What did you, the ball itself, what did you put in the ball? No, it's a two ounce solid rubber ball. Okay, so that's the standard weight. Yeah, two ounces. I weighed it on a postal scale. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and how did you attach my the string? My kidney bows postal, postal <laughs> scale. How did you attach? I drilled a hole through it and just, Use that red antenna string. Gotcha. Next. Okay, and that was the tree this, this uh, morning that we fired it over. Next. Okay, now. Okay, so I know that tree. Okay. <laughs> I was the one that was looking at it. Now. Okay. I remember this baby. Last, <laughs> was it last weekend that we did this for us? Or, yeah. No, maybe before two. that. Yeah, was was last weekend was, yeah, two weeks ago. Okay, so I have a G5 RV that I bought from uh, a, a, a uh, MFJ G5 RV I bought. And uh, I, this is the tallest tree on, on my property. On the front? In the front lawn. And you can see the ladder line. We were able to fire up over. Once I got the hang of how this thing worked, I mean, it's not like it, oh, we're going to do this and, you know, we're all done. No, it, didn't, it, it, it took a while to uh, to get the hang of which way I should fire and which sequence I should be pulling the line from. The general idea is you should fire, you know, if, if you want to clear branches, you better fire. I have, oh yeah, I have a little, the power line to the house is there. And so it, Actually, there is the, the insulated section. The rope is over that area, so don't be too scared. Okay, next. So here's the, G, the, the uh, brochure from MFJ's G5 RV. It's 102 feet, and I, was, I had at least another 15 feet of rope on either end of my antenna. And we have the ladder line. I have a tree in the middle of the yard. It's there in my shade tree. I don't know. That lost its leaves first after I put this antenna up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it has the ladder line coming down to a little uh, connector unit. So I used uh, some uh, pretty, pretty a hundred feet of uh, what is it? Uh, from uh, DX Engineering, this 400 series, yeah, uh, so it's cool. uh, really, really stiff. It's really stiff. LMR 400? I don't remember. And so I, I ended up, I, I 
I, I have it coming, it's just right opposite one of the bedroom windows, so we're able to, we had to go up to the bedroom, we had to snag the wires to get it, you know, against the tree that's in the middle, you know, to get it out of those branches. I mean, it took a lot of screwing <laughs> around to do that. English, you use English on, on these uh, ropes to, to get it free of the branches. Mm -hmm. And finally, I came down in front of the house and drilled, I had a nice, beautiful uh, three-quarter inch uh, drill bit. And it went through this, it went through the wall like butter. 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 Yeah, <laughs> into the basement, and I wrapped up all the excess. And so there's some coils. Of, I probably have, could have used a 50-footer, but I used what I got, and I'm not going to rip it apart. Too much work. Next. Okay, so there's just the drawing. There's the two trees. There's a tree in the middle. It comes down. A DXE 400 coax. That's my coming into the basement through the wall goes into an MFJ 998 tuner which is the high power automatic tuner and we have the 811H amplifier and the FTDX 3000 that's driving it and uh, when we fired it up for the first time it sounded good it certainly sounded at, at, in, in, in many cases I, I went you know AB between my vertical, I have the D, the Hustler uh, BTV5 vertical. I've had that for ten years. It's mm. you know, it's it works. You know, it's it, it it's and it's unobtrusive, and nobody hassles me about it. And most people miss that I even have it. You know, neighbor never said a damn thing to me. So. So what yeah, this was a lot, a heck of a lot better. I was, you know, the first time I turned it on, got, you know, somebody out in Minneapolis, or I could hear, I think I talked to them, because I fired up, you know, and put on, put on the, uh, the steam there on. But he said, yeah, we're all on, we're all on amps out there. And so they were doing a net out between some guy in Atlanta and the guy in Minneapolis, and I'm out here in Connecticut. I mean, that was, Went, went well, you know. It, it amazes me to this day how many people you will get on the air with in the Midwest and have a great signal and come back and tell you on a day where there's nobody competing for the frequencies and you're the only QSO on the band, she's got a 59 plus 40 over here. Is there any explanation for that? Yes, I'm wanting my 1200 watt linear. Yeah. Well, you know, that's an interesting intellectual exercise, but <laughs> why are you doing that? <laughs> you well, because I paid I've got one. Because I paid, I paid for it. For it. Right? I'm going to use the it. The basement's gold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I love oh, tubes. I love the help. I <laughs> love, and I love tubes. Right, right. You know, I'm in the tube business. And if anyone has, you know, a Macintosh amplifier that's taking up space, I'd be happy to take it away. I've told you I've got a best friend with an old Mac that I've been trying to buy off him for the last 25 years. No. No, <laughs> well, you have to kill him. <laughs> Next. So this is, you know, we're up at about 90 feet, is my great. estimate. <clears throat> so with the, uh, oh yeah, this, see, I took these with my... I think this was with my Canon SX60 zoom camera, which extends out and gives you an equivalent of 1300 millimeter telephoto lens. And it has amazing stabilization. We took this camera out on our trip to Antarctica and we're chasing penguins around in the Falklands. <laughs> <laughs> and it's windy and everything and we got some crystal sharp pictures you know with you know added like 500 millimeters or so you know that's handheld but this thing adjusts the sensitivity and 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 has other compensations for for vibration so you know for a off the shelf all in one camera i i i've blown away with the pictures i could get next Okay, now how do you cut an antenna rope? Well, you know, the only thing that worked really well was the box cutter. These, these guys, I mean, I, I've sharpened them up on the stone and, you know, it's, you're going, it's been my experience too. Yeah, 
interesting enough, a good pair of sewing scissors, I find. With the box cutters, I need a spare set of hands. Or I need to curl it and kind of uncoordinated, I'm risking my hand. But with a conventional pair of scissors that are sewing quality, standard, snips right through it. But I agree, the box cutters are excellent too. Yeah. But I've had a shrade at home that I've kept honed like a hunter. And no kidding, the shrade takes like your sign. 10 or 15 times. To get well, I could use my little uh, Klein, uh, you know, diagonal cutters, miniature cutters would, would, would snap through that and kind of roll pretty well. All right, so next, what do I have next? Okay, here's my, here's my uh, shack. And I, I, I can monitor my signal with the scope that you gave me. I built a little box, a magic box with a toroid and uh, I, sample this, I can sample the signal, I can put the audio on one channel and the, uh, actually I put the received audio on one channel and the uh, RF on the other. And uh, yeah, I can have fun with that, I have equipment. So here's the tuner, the 811H and FTDX. 3000, I've got a ham radio, deluxe, 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 whatever. Okay. What's that under the Enterprise? What? What's that under the Enterprise? Under the Enterprise. Oh, oh, bear cat scanner. We have lots of souvenirs. I have a, I have a bust of Thomas Edison that I got when I was 13 years old from Governor Edison in New Jersey. Oh, really? Yeah. And who's that behind your call sign? Oh, Thomas Alvin? Alvin? <laughs> the cat? Oh, that comes next. Okay. We got lots. We got lots. This is my, you know, my nick. This is a knickknack shelf that keeps growing. You know, I mean, it's. I'm old, okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hate to say it. Okay, so okay and so the, there's uh, the radio you gave me, Terry, and then I got the gotcha. FT 7900 there. And everything seems to be running off of this one power supply pretty well. Okay, next. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's what you saw. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Hidden. <laughs> like okay. Very good. Very good. Any questions? Yeah, here's what I'm just trying to figure out, though. So you saw basically a design, and you took from that design piecemeal from that page, or you just used some of the components they recommended on that page as guidance. And this is all your own design in the end. It's all my own, you know, it's, I took their information of how to build the valve. I already had this other stuff from previous attempts. Gotcha. You know, we still had to buy and spend, on top of everything, we probably still bought another $50 worth of plumbing parts. Yeah, in the end. Because you know what I, I mean? was going to say. Mm -hmm. well, what was the total cost, the overall cost? I, uh, uh, if you went out to do it, it'd probably, you'd probably spend a hundred dollars trying to find all this stuff. But you had all this stuff to But, you know, I traced the history of the Bioka design that we use. Remember that he did this just as a charitable endeavor for the DoorCal GX Association, or QRP Club, and this was his own design for his own purposes. But then he thought he would go out and publish the design, and he didn't charge anybody, and he would give you the parts list. But what he would tell you is, 80 to 90 percent you can get at a Home Depot or Lowe's. However, if you live in the Midwest or you're near a serious farm supply store, everything you need is available on their racks. And so when he did that, is he evolved that to say to make money? Well, I'll tell you what. I know where all the parts can be had, and from now on, for anyone that wants to buy my kit, 90 dollars and in a bag will be every part along with the assembly instructions. It's just that in my case, toxins and glues just drive me crazy. Oh, wow. So that's why I paid for the pre -assembly. This is two weeks, two, three weeks later, I can still smell the glow. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's yeah. After a while. Yeah. 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 No, it's a good, good design. It's nice to see someone build something from scratch, though, you know? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, you know, the hobby is as much talking as, and, and doing things about your hobby and building, building little gadgets. I mean, you can spend this, more time building gadgets for your station and putting up antennas than you might even spend on the air. 
but uh, uh, we we're putting up a second antenna. We have so one antenna is in the front. I'm putting up a B BW uh, ninety. Right. Yeah, uh, that's a folded oh, dipole. Right, right, right. And that's what's going to go in the backyard. And I'm going to hook that up first. I'll ch reading about it. It seems people like it as a receiving antenna. And it's kind of the, re the reviews I've read is that it's somewhat the higher the better, but it's it, it, yeah, it has an easier to match SWR because it was designed as a very broadband military it's very, very antenna. Broad right, so you uh, can hook I've it up. Got, uh, I've got one BW up, and I've got a new brand up which I just put up, and they both work. Plus side. You don't have to worry about retuning. Right. Yeah. Plus side, downside though on that design. Yeah, it's lossy. Yeah, it's very yeah. lossy. But I was going to hook it up to the little S SDR <laughs> radio box I bought. See, because since it's very broadband, it should be dynamite on that. Mm -hmm. 